I know what you're thinking. A lone rider, a dystopian world. Actually, what I was thinking was nice nod to the masked pandemic you all had to deal with while trying to make this movie. A mindless plague that spread like wildfire. It should have been this big inspirational moment where humanity united over her sacrifice. Mindless? Plague? Wildfire? What is this movie set in 2021? In a civilization-wide tragedy that should have inspired unity, but instead they fought? Come on, come on now. Concentrated all her magic into a gem and... Loving the 2D cutout style exposition dump. Good gearing up montage smash cut to title cards. This scene's when the film first had me. Immediate Raiders of the Lost Ark vibes and I love it. Plenty of action flicks and comedies out there these days, but a real honest to goodness classic adventure? Sign me up. Right, Tuk Tuk. Yeah, Tuk Tuk is a wife win. Classic Disneyification. They never shy away from making a character distractingly adorable no matter how serious or dark the film is. Just look at Gurgi from Black Cauldron. That film traumatized an entire generation, but Gurgi? An undeniably cute floof. That was awesome. Give me some shelf. Gotta love positive reinforcement and friendship. It's a theme that, oh my god, you can't get up. It's so cute. Okay, that's, that's the last one, I swear. It's just the new baby and lack of sleep talking. Why don't more doors open like this? You know, really make you earn that bathroom break? We must have the technology. Let's get on that. Jeffrey? Jeffrey Bezos? Water flowing up the stairs. Magic is definitely afoot. Now we know. That and the fact that Dragon is in the title. This feels too easy. Ah, the old magically appearing faceless ninja gag. Dragon gem glowing in Raya's eyes. The first of multiple killer fight scenes in the film. The low angle, fast camera work, and use of slow motion. This is something the trailer got me excited about and I wasn't disappointed. Not something we always get. And look, Mitchell's vs. the Machines has the Sun Samurai Mom scene, but this film has a whole heap of realistic, top-notch martial arts masterpieces. Boop. Ah yes, like boops, said, the universal language. Did I? He did say one toe. Not even a toe. Always love a fun reminder that we're not exactly on Earth with some cute creatures outside Earth's animal kingdom. First tale with sneaky mercenaries. Another animation switch for this exposition dump to look more like Cell style with the dark outlines. It adds a mythological quality to Raya's mildly xenophobic rundown of the other lands in Kumandra. A nation protected by angry assassins and their even angrier cats. Okay, so we're gonna need some crossbows and... <laughs> <laughs> Raya's real quick gem gesture as she's talking about combat. Always polite and respectful. The gesture is interesting though. At first glance I thought it was the dragon's horn, but nah, it's, it's the gem. I get it, their entire culture for five centuries has been centered not around dragons, but the gem. Shrimp paste from tail, lemongrass from talon. This seems to be tom yum soup, in which case, mm, tom yum. Who's hungry? <laughs> yeah, this guy gets it. How about the insane levels of detail with the crow's feet on Chief Benja's face and stray hairs in his head catching the light? Come on. Have you eaten yet? While this meat cute ends up being bogus due to Namari's betrayal, there really is something fantastic when you're a kid and you meet other kids with similar interests. I read that in a book once. Obviously, I had no friends as a child. This is actually one of the first times I've had rice in a while. So, uh, resource inequalities, eh? You might be wondering why they don't come back to this, but I think it's more a basic statement about Kumandra and how we're one world and we should share resources rather than hoard. Haha, <laughs> impossible. Love the obligatory shoe removal from both Raya and Namari, who technically plans on desecrating the temple by stealing the gem, but still respects East Asian tradition by honoring the sacred place. Thank you, Debla. You've been very helpful. Ooh, that tone shift in her voice. You gonna kick the little dude, you get neck drop kicked. So I, I wanted to figure out what this kick is called, thinking with my uncultured Western mind that it reminded me of Muay Thai since I've seen every Ong Bak. But then I started researching and realized she uses almost every Southeast Asian martial art, including Penchak Silat, plus Do Vat, which seems to be like the Vietnamese wrestling, and her double stick fighting is Arnis from the Philippines. And then Namari uses Krabi Krabong, another weapons-based combat from Thailand. So, uh, good Southeast Asian representation there. I still believe we can be Kumandra. Again. The definition of leading by example, something that it takes Raya about an hour and seven minutes to learn. But I love that it's catching Raya in her fighting stance and his sword's reflection that makes him give this impassioned plea. And will they go for it? No, no, they will not. Oh, maybe everything will be okay and it's not a big deal that, oh God, the truth so scary. But kudos to the design team on the druid, like a monstrous electric sentient Gak. Remember Gak? 
Nickelodeon? Gak? Anyone? No. I've lost touch with the Zoomers. Okay. Ma'am, I know you're panicked, but you just body slammed a child. They're repelled by water. 500 years is enough time that the current generation wouldn't know all the trivia about Droon, so it makes sense that it would be a surprise. Look at all the Droon instantly all around the Heart Palace, which makes sense when you remember that they multiply by stone and fools. And this ominous purple glow being cast over the bridge? Don't give up on them. Parental self-sacrifice right in front of their traumatized child? Must be a Disney film. Look at that heat mirage from those heat riots coming off the desert. I love how they took what should be effectively a Dr. Moreau level abomination on paper, giant pill bug, armadillo beast, and Disneyified him into an adorable sidekick whose plushy version I should own by now. Hey, so you may not have noticed at first that the river's ends, like Namari said, she's now sleeping at the river's end, aren't just at tail, and Raya has spent a long time going to river's ends. Animal sidekick character continuity. You're so easily distracted. Focus. Eyes forward, Tuk Tuk. Just realizing that Raya named her pet Rickshaw, or moped. In Thailand, Tuk Tuks are three wheeled taxi things. But for real, the riding rig is a genuinely cool idea. I bet the designers were all high five in the day they figured that one out. <laughs> Jump scares are really right at home in kids' movies since it's just a quick ah before we can all go back to having fun. But even Raya wasn't that scared, just annoyed. Again, removing her boots, this time just for the potential of the space being sacred. I trusted someone I shouldn't have. It's an interesting story decision to have the protagonist not really be the person responsible for releasing the drone. Yeah, she led Namari straight to the dragon gem, but her big mistake was that she trusted someone, which is what she'll have to do again in the end of the film. But it'll, it'll be different. It'll be different this time. Hello? Hello? Love Sisu's character introduction. It's so subtle and subdued, especially considering Aquafina's often big comedic style. Instead of exploding into some sort of friend like me type fanfare, Sisu shows up confused, shy, and then in a total expectation subversion, she's honest with Raya about how little she actually did to stop the drone. But then a whole new generation of furries were instantly snapped into existence. Is that. Is that, is that weird? Did I just admit that I find the fuzzy blue magical creature attractive? If you lost a puppy, well, we still have a big chunk of it. Would that make you feel better? Depends on the chunk. Yeah, I wasn't the one who actually made the gem. I just turned it in. And I love that the legendary version of how Sisu saved the world is completely wrong. It totally makes sense because it's much easier to focus your legend to be passed down on one person or dragon rather than all the dragons. I'm a really strong swimmer. But speaking of legends, this has got to be a real emotional roller coaster for Raya. On one hand, she just brought back this legendary world saving dragon, Sisu. Incredible. On the other hand, she just found out that glowing and swimming are considered magic in dragon culture. Sir Lots are terrifying. Anyone else super jelly of Namari's kicks? They are just. <sighs> It's a little thing, but the in Medias Ray's opening zooms out from the correct spot on the map since Raya was headed to tail. So many questions. First one, why Why am I wearing this? Caesar's got jokes. <gasps> also, she wasn't kidding when she said she wasn't the, the best, best dragon. dragon. But to be fair, it's her whole thing. She's trusting in booby traps that wouldn't stop a drew. Wouldn't be anything she's prepared for. <laughs> Modest dragon. You have to admit though, these bug booties are kinda cute. I will admit that. Look, nobody is guilt-free in this film, but I'd like to remind everyone that the tail chief body slammed a child. So, eh, you reap what you sow and all that. So it's Ivy's sword from Soul Calibur. I really want that sword. <laughs> Jennifer Goodwin, Bunny, Dustin Hoffman, Red Panda, Aqua, Fina, Dragon. But actually her human form is also spot on. I feel like Nora from Queens just dyed her hair and moved to Kamandra. Now that's not a very nice way to describe an old friend. Vocab lessons, but like, really, because it's a made-up language, so without translations we need definitions. What's dripping, Depla? But you have to do a little hard thinking for that one, since Raya used Depla sincerely earlier, so we can assume Namari is using it sarcastically, and her use of dripping only leads me to assume she's way cooler than me. Seriously, if you can get me that sword, I'd pay you at least 20 bucks. Solid, exhilarating chase scene, but can you imagine riding a cat? Have you seen cats? Something tells me every Sirlot trainer would mysteriously disappear before a saddle was ever placed on one. My name is Boone, I'll be your server today. Would you like to hear our daily specials? Yes, please. And Sisu is immediately entertained by Boone's energy, which makes sense considering Raya has been kind of a wet blanket so far, and Sisu has no clue why, since people and being people seems pretty neat. To go. <laughs> Classic fast to slow joke structure complete with quick cuts. Even if you know it's coming, it's hilarious. You didn't tell me Fang was after you. This is gonna cost you extra. Ha, <laughs> young entrepreneurs. Can't be beat. All right, by staying corrected, swimming can be magic. What is happening? <laughs> duck, duck, turtle shelling around in the background. 
Now might be a good time to talk about Sisu's tail. When she's first awoken, she accidentally wails on Raya with it, and then later she seems to be holding it in sort of a comfort blanket kind of way. But as soon as she's in the water, she's no longer clumsy or awkward. It's clear she's where she's supposed to be and that she's comfortable with who she is. Mmm, Kanji. What are you doing? We don't know him. It could be poison. Why would he poison us? Uh, I'd do it for the sword or Tuk Tuk, either one. I mean, don't poison. Don't poison people. Quick reminder for us that Namari isn't as ruthless and uncaring as she pretends. She still slows down to show the dragon statue's respect, even if she did ruin the world and stuff. What are June anyways? Instead of bringing water and life to the world, they're like a relentless fire that consumes everything in its wake until there's nothing left. It's interesting that the Southeast Asian culture version of dragons are closer to what Sisu said, they bring life and water, while us Westerners made them more like the Droon with fire and death. Um, I think I wanna go with their version. What you doing in there, hey hey? Alan Tudyk and Tuk Tuk pulled you in, didn't they? Distrustful to totally on board in three seconds because snacks. You're my people, Tuk Tuk. <laughs> Throat kick? Brutal. Credit, please. Oh, I like that. Uh, yeah, I'll be using credit, yes. I love credit! Better than Ryan Gosling at explaining the 2008 housing crisis. <laughs> ah, diaper! Gross, what a totally genius attack. All right, so two kids in, I feel like I'm pretty good at changing diapers, but a running two-person mid-air diaper change? <sighs> Respect. Ooh, did you see her go through that window? <laughs> still rather the mid-air diaper change, but still. <laughs> Teamwork. The little Astonji is kicking me straight in the feels. Speaking of Aladdin, I appreciate that we're not pretending like the Khan Baby Angji gang isn't stealing stuff for the thrill of the game or because they're bad. Almost like poverty and crime go together. I feel like maybe they've done this before. So does Noi recognize Sisu? Kind of looks like she says dragon. Dragon? Truly growing into the leader I raised you to be. Sandra Oh has been killing it on the voice acting game for the last few years. Raya, Over the Moon, Invincible, even a stint on the vastly underrated She Ra reboot. I guess what I'm saying is Sandra Oh is always a win. Uh, hey guys! Good one. Being people is hard. Yep. Oof, relatable. I love this piece of music, trying to rally the group's spirits as if they're all being dragged down by their loss. I just picture the horn player being nudged to sit up straight and hit his notes. A little one. First hints that Kublai Khan over here is just gonna be a big old softy. So I am sincerely asking you, will you help us? Aw, oh, look at you, Raya, learning to trust and stuff. Good for you, Raya. Note to self, don't die. Pep talks. Yep. Hey there, Princess Undercut. I knew you couldn't handle rolling solo. You're nothing without your band. Raya just laying the gauntlet down for Namari. Hair and posse jokes are apparently how you push Namari's buttons. Did you need that, Dupla? <gasps> nah. Badass bad girl. Another fantastic fight and a great showcase of all those martial arts I mentioned earlier, especially some Muay Thai from Namari now that she's unarmed. Ah, Raya tried to use the same kick that flattened Amari six years ago, but you know what they say about using the same kick twice. You shouldn't. Why are you stealing gem pieces? Oh, I'm just trying to get a matching set. And if you find yourself annoyed that Namari is kicking the snot out of Raya, remember that she's still trying to stall and distract Namari, which is why she keeps cracking jokes. I love that sweet and cutesy Sisu pulls off ferocious like a champ. It just happens to be on the one person that's more stoked than afraid. And I love that Sisu realizes it as well, and that the tears are because Namari is in awe. Also, Sisu is huge in Namari's pupils. She almost fills up her entire eye, but Namari is reflected back smaller in Sisu's. Love a conversation that only happens with the eyes and the scale of reflections. When were you gonna tell us she was Sisu? Uh, well, technically, you always knew she was Sisu. For the record, if you're mad at me, you are more than welcome to toss delicious snacks in my direction. I too wish to join this fellowship of Droon, but kickery. But kickery? I'll take it. The very realistic flying in the How to Train Your Dragon series is phenomenal, but another difference between Western and Eastern dragons you've probably noticed by now, Eastern dragons don't have wings. From what I understand, Asian cultures looked at their flight less practically, I guess, and more magically. And this might be the most incredible dragon magic yet. It also just looks so cool. Is she stepping on the rain? I don't know, but I love it. Comic panel fight scenes, tight soundtrack, explosions, pretty much nailed how awesome you think you are when you're dead. Not to mention Captain Boone gave us anime Sisu. Super flow plan. Am I right? No. Yeah, that's not flow, that's a clog. I agree. Yeah, the writer of my vow, or uh, New York City bed, 
Aquafina makes PG references difficult. Green tea. The creator of green tea would know it's good flow. Hey, wanna help us save the world? I've been waiting for someone to ask me. Here you go. Best friends forever. It's fun to laugh at Sisu's idealism, especially with the comedic timing of Namari throwing her swords away. However, you gotta respect that despite all the sketchy behavior she's seen, she still believes in people. Even if it's not really fair, since she's a dragon and not people. So, what do we do now? <laughs> Almost a fourth wall break there, acknowledging that side characters pretty much wait around for the protagonist to come back. All I know is I trusted them, and they trusted me. Call me counterculture, but I love narrated flashbacks like this. The tone is perfect, the world looks dystopian, and all we need is Sisu's narration since we already have a connection with her. No famous cameos for the other dragons, no unique personalities, because that's not the point of this scene. It's the emotional power of Sisu's siblings trusting her, which in turn gives her the confidence that trust is the key to defeating the Droon. You remind me of him. I oh, am. Yeah. Strong, good looking, with impeccable hair. I mean, yeah. I know. I know. I know! I don't know. Comedy rule of three followed up with a bait and switch. Has Raya been taking improv classes? Using small team tactics to acquire snacks? I might have been too hungry when I wrote this script. I'm the professional here. May I? But that looks delicious. Disney finally taking some notes from Studio Ghibli. I guess Ratatouille also made me hungry, but that was literally about food and rats. Paris. And like review culture, kinda? Do we have any soup? I look forward to filling my eyeball with the joytastic image. Joytastic? Tong's got the words. I love the rapport between Tong and Noi the Khan baby. It's cute, but also nails the loneliness of living in a Droon's world. A Tong and Khan baby buddy adventure film, you say? Will they solve crimes? Maybe? Will they also commit crimes? Most definitely. After Astrid's divorce from her cheating loser husband, she probably would want to take some life lessons from Paik Lin, so bowing checks out. Namari's biggest sin here is a lack of trigger discipline. I mean, she was squeezing it, so I don't know what Raya was supposed to think, but I'll go out on a limb here and say that Raya's actual sin was not trusting Sisu. Sisu said, I got this. And Raya took matters into her own hands. Huh. So you're saying people were idiots and the environment altered? And in a way that irrevocably dooms all of humanity? Man, I wish there was a way for me to relate to this part of the story. Raya left her scabbard, a call back to Benja saying he wouldn't need to unsheathe his sword in the beginning and then literally sheathing it while facing adversaries, and she left the other gem pieces because she's not interested in fixing the world anymore. She's just out for blood. Although it was nice of her to leave the gem pieces so that her friends could defend themselves. Wait, can you sheathe your sword into a scabbard? Also, I know the whole moral of the film is we're supposed to trust each other, and therefore Raya's doom walk to fight Namari is not a good thing, and anger is never the answer, and blah, 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 but dang, Raya's a badass good girl. You try not dripping at this angle. Oh, crap, did I use it right? On fleek, savage lit! One more dope fight sequence with so much care put into it, it's genuinely so fun to watch. And this upbeat, fast-paced, choppy turn the score takes here? Come on, James Newton Howard. All these people are drone food if we don't get them out. There we go, our whole crew, each with a gem representing a different part of Kumandra, coming together to save the day. Any ensemble adventure film needs this kind of moment. The de facto leader is off being the dummies, the team steps up to get it done. Despite their lifelong rivalry, this is the first fight where it seems like Raya is genuinely trying to kill Namari and vice versa. Makes sense, since neither of them feels like they have anything left to lose, especially when you realize Chief Verana is stoned because Namari took her one defense, the gem, with her to meet Raya. I never meant for any of this to happen. First real show of remorse from Namari, and it's kind of disarming? Teamwork and friendship and saving all the fangers or fang fangites. Fang fangians? <laughs> Boom, Namari saves Tuk Tuk, all is forgiven. Namari, you are welcome at my house for snacks anytime. Well, this is obviously terrifying. Disney really knows how to pull kids in with the cute fluffies and then traumatize them with pure nightmare villains. Looking at you, Great Mouse Detective. After what she's done? We'll never trust her. Then let me take the first step. Ooh, expectation subversion to have our hero step to the sideline to fully showcase her trust. And it's super moving to me that everyone follows in Raya's footsteps not because she's their de facto leader, but because she legit put her money where her mouth was and potentially sacrificed herself to put trust in Namari. And the reality is, it's really powerful when others put their trust in you. I've often convinced myself I wasn't the right man for the job, but the love, respect, and trust given to me by friends and family helps me keep going. Never underestimate what putting your trust in someone can do for them. And hopefully they won't stab you in the back and release a purple slime plague in the process. And movie over. That's right, kids. The moral is that trust is for losers. Trust no one. You will turn to stone. This score rules. 
it goes everywhere and I'm along for the ride. Big magic sword feels here, also maybe some Goblin Dario Argento influences, which is surprising but welcome. Plus that shot of the clouds above the Fang Palace could definitely be a metal album cover. There's my guy, Huggin. That's a lot of dragons. And even these people who grew up with dragon legends had never seen one, so this would be a sight. A thunder of dragons rain walking over a waterfall? Aw, family. Congratulations, Mama Noi. You're about to adopt three monkey catfish hybrids. Ah, uh, yeah, Chief Benjamin limping from getting shot in the leg like an hour ago. You should probably have that checked out. Nothing will make you feel like a child more than reconnecting with your previously stoned dad after six years. Also hugging. Aw, I want to live in a world with dragons. Stupid no dragon world. Little recap of the story with concept drawing type art over the credits. <laughs> I'm glad we can laugh at how the pandemic shifted our culture because otherwise... Yeah. Let's jump right in on this trust theme since even I made some jokes and there have been some fiery hot takes about how just trust all humans no matter what, no matter how much or how many times they've betrayed you, just trust them. And come on people, you know that's not the message here. I'm not gonna say it's perfectly fleshed out, but we definitely don't have a people are too trusting problem amongst humanity. No one trusts anyone and a lack of trust is a good way to get a lack of trust back and it creates this infinite feedback loop of distrust. The message wasn't trust everyone, it was that sometimes even when your trust has been betrayed, you have to take the first step. You have to put yourself out there again. And you know what? You might get turned to stone, but sometimes it's the only way forward. It doesn't mean be vulnerable with people who have a history of abusing you. Namari is a decent example of this because she betrayed Raya one time, and while she comes off all sinister and in control of her actions, she's a child. It's apparent throughout the rest of the film that she was doing her mother's bidding. She's responsible for her actions, but only so much. Ultimately, neither Raya nor Namari is solely responsible for breaking the world, because they're kids. But it also takes their childlike innocence and trust in each other to bring the world back. Faith in something they couldn't see, couldn't confirm, and outside of just taking Sisu's word for it, had no idea if it could even work. They both had to be turned to stone before confirming that it worked. It's not the first time we've seen a baddie redeemed, but I do love that the catalyst was Raya putting her trust in said baddie when the world was telling her not to. This is one of those movies where we could talk about the visuals for days and days. The soft glow on everything from the colored lights and talon, the bright and pristine turquoise tiles and heart palace, the chill you can feel in the northern air of spine, the lightning bugs floating around Boone's ship at night. In fact, the lighting is always on point. The colors and facial design and weapons, everything is perfectly crafted. The world building is spectacular. Every new location feels historic and lived in unless it's supposed to feel abandoned and treacherous, in which case it does that. It's always gorgeous to look at, and most of the voice acting is top notch. There are a few weird deliveries here and there, but it's easy to chalk that up to everyone having to record at home in their closets. <laughs> Come on. I think it's spectacular that Kelly Marie Tran is a Disney princess. She really killed it in this movie. There isn't an actor out of place, and somehow I'm gonna sort through these strange new feelings I have that are mixing with the love I already had for Aquafina. But, uh. <clears throat> Disney isn't big on sequels, but I'd happily come back to this world. It's such a complete story that I'm good with leaving it alone as well. I just... Give us more Kumandra. Or give us another Southeast Asian princess, you cowards. Okay, I got a little carried away. So anyway, I'm back-ish. I feel like I said that exact thing in the past. I'm back. I'm just also two kids, one less than a month old. You know, life is unpredictable, I guess. But I know there won't be a new video next week, but hopefully the week after we'll get into a nice stretch of some new content. Your favorite. Open wide. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. You can trust me. Can I trust you? And learn to trust one another. I trusted someone I should know. You really got some trust issues. Because you don't trust anyone. You can't trust anyone. I trusted them. You can't trust anyone. I get someone's trust. And they trusted me. You trusted people. I can't trust people. I trusted you. Give a little trust. Trust me. Trust each other. Trust me. Trust her. Trust me. Trust her. Trust someone. Trust you. Trust her. Trust what?